let's stay <clears throat> with Mary in the garden. Imagine yourself there peering into that tomb. It's empty. It's empty. The stone has been rolled away. Jesus is risen. Hallelujah. 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 Let's stay with Mary. She had arrived early. She had disco uh, discovered that the stone had gone and she'd ran to tell the men that Jesus had disappeared. And now she's come back and she's here alone all again. All that she has treasured for the last three and a half years is lost, she believes. This is her Jesus who has been taken away. This is her Jesus who had driven seven demons out of her. This is Jesus, we believe, who had allowed her to anoint his feet with her tears and dry them with her hair. New hope a new meaning has been snatched away at the terrible cross on which he died. There she peers into this empty tomb. Two angels are sitting there. Why are you crying? They've taken away my Lord and I can't find him. She turns around, probably to go and look for his body, to find where they've laid him. She doesn't recognize then Jesus standing before her. Such is the depth of her grief. Why are you crying, he asks. Who are you looking for? Thinking he's just a gardener, she asks him, where have you put him? Mary. Mary. Mary hears the gardener say her name and then she realizes it's not the garden gardener it's Jesus saying her name and she responds Rabboni teacher and she clings to him I imagine her clinging to his feet he is alive he is risen indeed hallelujah 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 but you know this world of ours is full of such Marys who have lost everything that they have treasured whose lives have been shattered everything that they knew and loved has been snatched away from them think of those for a moment we were thinking of during our prayers just now who lost their loved ones in that terrible crash in the French Alps my God my God what have you done with my husband? You've taken him away and I don't know where you've put him. Think of that terrible plane crash that occurred in the Ukraine. Lord, my child, where is he? He's been taken away and I don't know where you've put him. Think of all the terrorist acts we've heard of in recent times in the Middle East, in France, in Denmark, in Africa. It just seems to be spreading more and more and more. And the result of that are many Mary Marys crying, Lord, where is my loved one now? Where have they laid him? Think of all those who have lost their loved ones through natural causes, through deaths. I think of my parents as I prepare this, who, whose two sons, two of their, their sons were snatched away during my childhood. Where have you placed them? Why have they been taken away? I think, of, I think of my mother when my father was getting iller and iller and iller with his Parkinson's. My husband, Lord, what have you done with him? He's being taken away from me. The man I knew and loved. Think of the millions of migrants who are, who are fleeing northward, trying to crossing borders and oceans and seas, trying to find a new life somewhere, only to lose their lives on the way, or to find life so intolerable in the new strange places where they land that they wonder why they ever left their homeland. And think of all those whose treasured way of life has been 
disrupted by the latest wave of immigrants that have flooded into their country. Lord God, what have you done? You've taken away all the things that I loved and cherished, and I don't know what you've done with them, where you've hidden them. Think of the families across Europe who suddenly discover that their child has disappeared, the one that had been sleeping in the bedroom, only to find out that they fled through, uh, through Turkey into Syria and are now signed up for ISIL. Lord God, what have you done with my love when you've taken them away and I don't know where you've hidden them? Think of the thousands of children we are now hearing about whose childhood has suddenly been snatched away when they became victims of abuse. Lord, you have taken the youth of my child away and I don't know what you've done with it. Our church has tens of Marys. Our town has hundreds of Marys. Our country has thousands of Marys. And this world has uncountable numbers of Marys who are now weeping, crying, Lord, what have you done with the things and the person I treasured? Where have they been laid? The old life gone. Even those of faith sometimes saying, my Jesus, where have you gone? What have they done with you? And all you see in front of you is this gardener and you heap all your grief on that gardener. What have you done with all I treasured and I don't know where to find it anymore? And then you discover, standing in front of you is not the gardener, but is Jesus. And you discover that as he says your name to you, for I have called you by name and you are mine, says Isaiah. Have you ever wondered, coming back to the scene of Mary there looking into this tomb, why Jesus did not allow her to stay with him? Why she did not why Jesus did not allow Mary to go on clinging to his feet as I imagine her doing? Why? Why didn't Jesus let the hook up with her? Why didn't they get married? Wouldn't it have been the most compassionate and kind thing to do? Mary's got her Jesus back. She loves him with an undying love. Couldn't they have shacked up together? But Jesus tells her, no, you are to leave me and you are to go and why does he say that? The answer comes in the reading we had from the book of Acts, from the words of Peter. He says, God has no favorites. God has no favorites. This Jesus who appeared to Mary wants also to reveal himself to all the Marys that are grieving and suffering and who have lost all that they treasured. God has no favorites. His heart was broken for Mary Magdalene, but his heart is also broken for all the Marys of this world and of all history. He has no favorites. So you see, Jesus says to Mary, I am ascending to my father and your father, and you are now to go and tell the brothers and sisters that I am alive and risen from the dead. This is your job, Mary. Go and meet them. And as your grief begins to dispel, meet them in their grief and tell them that I'm alive. So you see, at one and the same moment, God has no favorites, and yet God in Jesus is there for every single individual person who has ever lived on this earth. He has no favorites, and he is there for everyone, for every Mary, every person who has lost 
what they most treasured and loved. God is in the facts. Our faith is not just make-believe. It is not just a series of interesting propositional statements that you give your verbal assent to or whatever. It is not just a, a kind of system to make you feel better, to get you through these hurts that life throws at you. It is not. God is in the facts. And Isaiah tells us from the reading we heard this morning that a shroud enfolds all people it wasn't just Jesus' body that was enfolded in a shroud. All peoples are enfolded in a shroud. He goes on, a sheet covers all nations. Can you imagine the whole earth covered with a sheet, wrapped in a shroud? This is the fact of life on earth. He goes on to talk about the disgrace of the people on earth. God is in the facts. And there are no safe havens. There are, sorry guys, no perfect churches. And sorry politicians, there are no utopias. Every attempt to create a utopia or a perfect church or a safe haven will fail, however noble it may have been. And so you see, like Mary Magdalene, we are brought to our knees. They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have put him. And if you are one of these Marys here this morning, and I know there are some here this morning, it is at the point of your desperation, your inner despair, your existential collapse, it is in right in the middle of that that he chooses to speak your name to you personally. If you're on the crest of the wave and your bank balance is shining and you're just about to take up a new job and you're in love and about to get married, it's less likely that Jesus will speak his, your name personally into your ear but if you are on the point of despair and everything that you have treasured and known has been blown away by circumstances even blown away by something that you have done wrong and you're broken that's the moment he chooses to appear the risen Lord Jesus and he does it so gently and he does it so personally by simply saying, Mary, Steve, Peter, Margaret, Naya, Josh, Magda, Lee, Leo, Rebecca, Mark. Wendy. Jesus reveals himself to you, but he doesn't reveal yourself in bodily form as he did to Mary Magdalene. Rather, Jesus is brought to you by the witness of the broken and restored Marys of this world. Jesus can't appear all at once to everybody in bodily form. He's chosen not to do that. He's chosen to return to his Father. And he sends his Spirit upon all the broken mirrors of this world. He whispers their name into their ear, into their heart. And as they are lifted up into his risen presence and their hope is restored, what does he do? He says, Go to my brothers and sisters who are broken and in despair and tell them that I am risen. It's interesting, isn't it? Christian history has it that the first apostles were a bunch of 11 men. And you know, open your Bible, read, 
and you will discover that the first apostle was a woman, a loose woman, a demonized woman, an excluded woman, and a woman despised by men, a woman who Jesus had healed and loved and restored, a woman who Jesus had singled out as amongst the first to whom he would reveal himself as risen Lord. He chose Mary first. A woman to whom who Jesus met in that cemetery when she frantically was searching for his dead body. A woman who would touch the teacher and clung to him. But a woman who then left him there in the cemetery to go and start her new job, which he gave her as an apostle. Apostle simply means one who is sent. Yeah? Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so I send you. He said to Mary, I send you to the brothers and sisters to meet them in their brokenness and tell them I am alive. Do you see what God has done? He's chosen the most broken and wretched and despised and excluded and a immoral woman you could think of, lifted her up and sent her out to bring hope to the broken. None of us could have thought of such a good story as that. So, my friends, if you happen to be one of the broken Marys of this world, you of all people are most likely to find Jesus calling you by name, entering into all your loss and grief, putting you back together again, and saying to you, don't remain in your grief and sorrow. Go. Go. Tell them I am alive. then on this mountain prophesied Isaiah he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all people the sheet that covers all nations he will swallow up death forever the sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces he will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, surely this is the Lord. We trusted in him and he saved us. He is risen. He is risen. If you're one of the Marys, find a voice to say, however quietly, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can we do that? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please stand, would you? The risen Lord stood amongst his friends in a room which had its doors bolted for fear of the Jews. The people in that room, the men and the women, believed that everything had gone, everything had been lost, everything they treasured and had hoped for had been blown away by events. Jesus appeared and stood amongst them and he said peace be with you my peace I give you and I say to all of you now this morning the peace of the Lord be always with you